And there we go. <laughs> okay, so this morning we're going to do um, training on the Probliminator, I call it Probliminator Journaling Outline. And um, you have a topic to? I do. I, I would like to do it on uh, letting go, letting go of control. And okay. um, yeah, I mean, that's a pretty big topic. Of course, I have the specific examples that I can give you, but that would be the big one. Yeah, that's that's a really good topic to do it on. And um, I always say that you can, I call it Probliminator, um, although what's behind Probliminator, the whole concept of Probliminator is working on the shadow, or doing shadow work is basically what it is. But I call it Probliminator because, you know, that's when you wanna do shadow work is when you have a problem. And anything you consider a problem you can work through with this process. So um, I, I made a copy. I, I don't know if we go through the beginning. By the way, let me introduce Sarah. <laughs> Sarah from oh. San Diego. I, you know, this, this, this may be something I post to YouTube. So I may have little blurbs in there that would be for a larger audience. But uh, first time doing this, so we're, we're winging it. Um, so yes, yeah, Sarah, beautiful Sarah. Um, um, great student and teacher because she's given me, she's challenged me in ways that have helped me grow and learn. So we love her. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Okay. So I want to bring up, I kind of want to just, just um, give an example of how someone might bring up the form. There's a couple of ways. There's with by going to probliminator.com that links to my secret formula website which has a page um, with the online form that you can do i have also created a template file uh, a word template file so that when you double click on that template file it just comes up as a new document with forms you can fill in and stuff like that figure out how to open up a template file so I don't have to show that. So what I'm going to show is my, um, oh my, you're not seeing it, are you? Because I see my, myself still on the screen. Um, yeah, I do see a training template document. Oh, okay. All right. Well, you're not showing it to me. You are sharing, screen sharing. Okay. All right. So I've, um, I pulled up a, I pulled up the word document um, template. And this can be found um, at howtotransformproblems.com. It's, it's a PDF you can download from my Etsy site. Um, or, you know, contact me and I'll give it for free. Uh, the, the, essentially, the probliminator.com is free if you want to fill out online, copy the, the, the questions or whatever to your own, phone or own format or give me a little $8 donation by going to the Etsy site and downloading the, um, the form. So it starts out, the way that I like to have you start out the, um, the process is by just kind of checking in with yourself and what's your gratitude, you know, what you might be grateful for, what, what you might um, have noticed since the last time. So if you're gonna be doing this on a regular basis, you wanna be in the process of noticing, which we'll talk about later. Um, but noticing, it, it's, it really is all about noticing. You know, The whole idea with this is to get in the habit of really being aware of yourself when you have negative emotions, when something doesn't feel right, and, and, and really looking within to see what is it, how is your vibration, creating that outer experience so you know it's just a good it's just a good way to start by 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 noticing and then getting into um getting into what you know getting into working through what we consider the problem so um what is my I don't know why they don't show me what what I'm doing I guess do you see it just kind of scrolling when I do that Yes. Up and down. Okay. All right. So I guess I guess what they're showing me outlined in green is what you're seeing. Okay. So I look at this 
as a three part process. And we might only get through one part today because we're kind of limited to two hours. I have sessions today later. So um, we, uh, we can't go more than two hours. And um, I know when I do this, when I, I don't always use this form anymore, but I, because I really have it down and I just kind of go with the flow, I know what I'm looking for. But when I use this form, I know that just going through the first part questions can take quite a while. So it's not, you know, there's this for when you really can't let go of something. And then there's the um, resistance log, which I'll talk about at some point for those day-to-day -day things when you're catching yourself, you're catching yourself and you're logging yourself in resistances and, and working to transform them. So we're going to say that, okay, we're going to start with, with the problem. Um, it's generally pretty easy for people to, to be able to verbalize, communicate, and, um, and be aware of problems. It's, it's what's behind the problems that we really need to, to become aware of. So, so if you were to, um, if you were to verbalize the problem, how, how would you do that? You, I mean, we have it in the back of our mind that we're working through this problem and it doesn't have to be any different <laughs> than if you were just stating the problem, but with the back, with this idea, with this problem at the back of your mind, what, what would you call it? What is it you don't want? What is it, you know, what, how do you want to, how do you want to um, describe it? Well, I don't want to keep recirculating in this for me, it's the anger and the hate that I'm feeling towards a specific person and um, feeling wronged uh, and just having a really hard time letting go of those negative emotions, even though I'm feeling them a lot, it seems like they just keep spinning back. And I want to like, there's an attachment to it, right? There's also an attachment of, you know, when this is a twin fin lame situation. So when is he going to reach out? How is he going to learn this lesson? So I'm also worried about the outcome of uh, what's going to happen in the future. And I want to a let go of the negative emotions and b let go of the timeline and even caring if it comes or if it goes or when it happens and all of those things. That's excellent. So uh, I noticed that you, you're you also aware of what you want in this situation, which is really good. Sometimes it's really hard to even see what you want when you're so shrouded in the negative. So it's good that you're, you're able to also at least get a feel for the way you want things to turn out. And sometimes we don't know until we actually have the negative emotions cleared up. And, th and that might change as well. You know, you want you, you say you want something, sometimes it's like, I know for me, <laughs> when I have relationship issues, all I want to do is get away. My goal is to be away, you know, whether it's breaking up or whatever. Um, but uh, that always changes <laughs> when, when the negative emotions are gone. So that's why we have to really work through the negative emotions first. And, you know, like you said, be able to let go. So, you, so we're kind of getting this it's like a two for one <laughs> with the way you're with what you what you're saying you want to want help with um that's you know this process is supposed to help you let go but when it's not then we can look at why you're not letting go because that in itself is a problem so we'll see how um and it might be that i need to tweak this process a little bit myself um but we'll see. We'll see how it goes along because I'm going to um, I'm going to be helping. Tune in. I want to teach you how to come up with your own answers. But I also realize that when you're in the middle of it, it's very hard. And I and I am available for sessions um, for helping psychically see tune into what what's going on here. So so that it's going to be a combination of me giving you a session and teaching you how to help yourself. So problem symptoms um, that can be if you think about it, um, you're not being able to let go. Um, what are the symptoms of that? 
that might be thinking about it all the time, being distracted from your work. Those are just examples. Um, yeah, I think there's an obsessive obsess obsessiveness about it. Um, also because it's like, I always feel his presence. So it's hard to have the separation that I'm looking for. So it's frustrating from that perspective is like, energetically, I feel his presence, but right now I'm like hateful and angry and I, I want the disconnection. And so, um, so there's that, but physically also, I think I, for me, I tense up in my body. And so there's tension in my and tension and constriction, you know, in my upper back. Mm. Um, and, you know, I think it also causes me to close my heart, you know, and protect my heart a little bit because of some of the anger and the pain. Um, let's see. Yeah. And then overall, it's just, it's a distraction. It's consuming more of my mental space than I would like it to. Mm, okay. Those are excellent um, insight into your own um, into your own process when this happens. So that's, um, that's, <clears throat> that's excellent. <clears throat> so if I look at, um, okay, so I'm just pausing here for a minute. Cause sometimes when I do this myself, I think that the, that the, um, the, um, Gosh, what are the words? I think that something needs to come before this. Like when we talk about problem symptoms, I, I really want to ask you, instead of what it says next, what are you resisting? I really want to ask you if you if there's any place, uh, is there any other area of your life that you feel that way? Is there um, in uh, besides a relationship? Is and I think that you know when I when I ask you that I feel like you're you know we we go back to what you already know it's almost like you you have figured out that letting go is your problem so maybe in work you have these same feelings um and they just they just perpetuate and that's and it goes back to what you already know is really the problem and that's being able to let go does that make sense yeah yeah I certainly think these things show up in a lot of contexts in life although I do seem to notice it the most when I feel like I need something from someone, like I'm working with that spiritual healer and she keeps having things come up and she's not communicate, communicative or available. And it's frustrating because I'm relying on her for a service. And so it's like, when I feel that out of control, just like, you know, when my partner creates distance, I feel out of control. So I notice this come up even more. And at work when like, I don't have a say in something, right? Like there's no flexibility it's like a um it feels like a dictatorship in a sense it's like this is it there's no freedom or you know autonomy this is what you need to do this is how you need to do it those are the times i think the letting go is very difficult because i'm in a container that feels like i need something or want something different but i don't have the power to choose basically okay those are those are really excellent awarenesses as well. You are feeling powerless. Um, and reliant, yeah. Yeah, reliant, um, looking to someone else to really, um, really be able to neutralize this for you. Like they have to do something in order for you to be able to, um, um, get right with yourself right and um that's exactly what this what this form is all about to help not go there <laughs> in this world this world um it's common and we're taught that it we've been we've been conditioned to look to somebody else to fix our problems they don't teach us to um to, you know, you don't, you're not taught in school how to, how to step into your own power, um, especially these days, you know, we, hear, you know, we, we hear a lot about racism and this and that. And when I, when I hear that, I'm like, you know, people, if people are, have been a victim of racism, it's because they had, a, they might've had a, 
they might have had a, an experience in life where they were traumatized because of some racist comment somebody made and they never let that go they never healed from that and so they keep experiencing the same thing because they haven't healed it and the more they look to somebody else the more they give their power to somebody else to fix it and they never ever ever are going to get right with themselves when they do that so the world is in a process of going through this and it's interesting that you're noticing it in yourself because it's it's the energy of the world today so it's it's something that when you fix in yourself when you when we heal in in, in yourself then you're going to you're going to be more unified in the world you're going to be more one with the the healing that the that is taking place in the world and ascend with the with the earth as it um as it ascends so it, you're really um, your own intuition is telling you you need to work on this and and you're and you're going with that and that's just really great. So if you were to look at this, I mean, so we've kind of determined that that looking to other people, needing somebody else to make it better for you, if we're kind of looking at that kind of part of it, if you were to think about, you know maybe being able to, to feel right in yourself without that, what, what are you resisting in that? What are you resisting in, in looking to yourself? Or what are you afraid of in doing that? Um, I think I'm, yeah, so I'm resisting my will to be self-reliant and to rely on also my connection to divinity to guide me and you know my own intuition which I know I have that power for both relying on myself and you know the divine guidance so um the other question that you asked though was oh what, what am I afraid mean? of yeah um I think there's potentially some limiting beliefs that I can't do it on my own or potentially I don't want to do it on my own um and so, yeah, I guess those fears of which all of this stuff stems from my childhood, which if we look at attachment theory, more of the, you know, the fear of abandonment and things like that. So, um, so yeah, the fear of aloneness and the wanting to do things with people and the partnership and the team, which I don't think is necessarily unhealthy. However, when mm -hmm. it's like you said, that reliance, it be, can become unbalanced. So. Um, yeah, the, the fear of, of aloneness. Oh, so you think that in being able to kind of overcome your own emotional imbalance means that you're going to be alone? You're afraid of being alone. Well, it's, um, yeah, there's something there. I'm just trying to like see if that's truly the aloneness is truly related to this particular problem. Um, but yeah, there's something attachment wise that I want to reach to someone else when I need to be reaching to myself. And so I think it's just doubt. Oh, detachment. Really. Yeah. So you think that it creates a detachment in, in looking to yourself and going within. You yeah, there's, there's some when disconnection you, there. Okay. So when you feel like you want to resolve an issue with your partner or um, any any relationship issue, you think that going in mean going within means you're completely detached from that person and it's going to be over. You're never going to see them. So that's the fear. Um. Yeah, I think the fear, like if someone says I need space is like, oh, wow, this is, that means it's over. Like that's an automatic fear for me. Um, but I mean, I still will look inside when there's a conflict with a partner or someone. And I still also have times where I blame or I'm still reaching or grasping for something that I think I need from them. So there's something within me that feels unmet from past childhood that is still trying to fulfill that so 
it's like, um, I don't know if you would call that an emptiness or something that I don't feel like I have inside of myself that I need to get from someone else. Right, right, right. Okay. So, we're, so when we, we're going to get to the section where we kind of look at, look back at what happened and how you can look at stuff. Now, I went and modified this form a little bit to add this part about asking yourself, uh, what light and information um, is needed to be able to let go. And that's one way of asking, you know, how you let go. Um, I don't, I don't think it's appropriate just yet. You know, I have it highlighted that it could be a time when you ask that question, but I don't think it's appropriate yet because this came from a, a past trauma. So it's the past trauma that initiated all of this fear and this feeling of being alone and abandonment and all of that. So when, when we get to the negative emotions, we're going to ask that question. But I, this is my favorite question to ask. What is that? Um, that is, that is what, that's like the first thing I look for when I'm doing a psychic reading and you tell me that there's the, there's an issue with letting go. I want you to just kind of consider if you look at yourself in this pattern, in this pattern of needing somebody else to um, fix it, or, or I'm not gonna, get, I don't wanna say too much because it's, it could be what your, what your answer is. And I want to let you think about what it is. You're looking at yourself in this pattern. Imagine yourself looking at yourself from outside of the pattern, watching yourself, um, studying your energy. I'm going to do the same thing while you think about it. I'm going to psychically look at your energy when, um, as it relates to this not being able to let go, and we'll and we'll take a moment and we'll compare notes in a in a moment. I'm I think I should maybe pause the video so we can really take time to do this. I'm not okay. So you go ahead and think about that, studying your energy, and I'll do the same. Have you got it? Yeah, I okay. think I got it. Um, so what are your thoughts? So what came up for me was, you know, there was a time when I was dependent on my parents to meet my needs. And I did, I felt deprived in some way, like I wasn't getting my needs met to, to a place of fullness or um, in whatever way that was of care. And so I felt like I had to grasp and reach and force and push to get them to meet my needs so that I felt so that I could survive, you know? And so at that point I did need people. And at this point I don't, I mean, like a lot of my own, I can fulfill my own needs for the most part. So, um, you know, I think there's a little bit of a desperation energy to that, um, and because it was never, you know, worked out, like that, that cycle continued or has continued in my life. And so, but at that age or, you know, and when I was very young, I did feel like if I was left alone, I could truly, I could die, you know, like I needed my family. And so that feeling of fear of aloneness is because it was survival and Mm -hmm. it's old you know what I mean because now yeah. if I'm if someone doesn't help me with something that I really do need help with then I'll figure it out on my own or I'll find another resource kind of thing right right so you so you're recognizing the you're recognizing the power you found in that so that's good that's part of it but it comes down to it comes down to that 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 part of you that didn't heal and that's why you can't let go there's, there's um, the way that I see it, and, I, and right now I'm caught in, do we go with what you just said and, and work on healing that? Or do I even say, and that's why sometimes you, you have to skip around in this form, right? Because I kind of think that once you get to, the, once you figure that out with this, what that is, you almost have to go to um, where did that come from? And, that, and you went right into where did that come from? So those kind of go, those kind of go um, hand in hand. So you going through this with you almost makes me feel like I have to move this before what is that? Because the what is that 
needs to go right into um, where did this come from? So we, thanks for that. <laughs> I think we're gonna skip this for now, why you might choose this problem or, or come back to it, because I wanna head right into, um, into healing this part of you. When I see this, when I look at it psychically, I just see you a little bit like, um, and you and I have, have talked about this before, there's something that you need and you're, and you're, and you're talking about, you're, you're saying that over and over again, there's something that you need. Um, there's like, you don't have all the tools, like somebody else has the tools. Um, I see you almost not being able to, um, like it's at the back of your mind that there's something else you need from, there's something that you need from someone else before mm -hmm. you can complete the process. So that's true. That is resonating in me. Um, so was there a time, it seems like we have to go right into, so you realize that you weren't getting your needs met. Um, we really have to focus on that time that something was like something was never resolved was there an incident that you can think of where there was something that just was never resolved that was left hanging um like indefinitely and maybe you didn't even you weren't even able to find the resources within and you, while you, we're going to do this again, where you think about it, and I'm going to tune in psychically and work to, well, actually, I'm going to have you, what I really need to do is to have you uh, be able to move through that. So I might just for assistance, in case you don't see it, look at the uh, incident, what that incident might have been that initiated this pattern. Um, but you go ahead and access that memory, access that that pattern from the past, that incident. And uh, I'm gonna look as well and see what I see. And you let me know what you've done when you're done, because I have something. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean, I didn't really get a ton besides just not feeling like contented or safe or just nurtured, loved, you know, like supported, you know, there's just a lot of things that as a child, I don't think I felt. And so it was very insecure. So it left me thinking I needed something outside of myself to fill those things. Mm -hmm. you, yeah. You, um, the, the visual that I'm getting, it's almost like you were doing homework and there was no one there to check it to say you did good to 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 give you any kind of feedback right for that so so that definitely has a strong feeling of nobody is there to there's nobody there to help there's nobody there to um to, to you know to check your work you i mean students need teachers students need um need you know, need to know they've done the right, the right thing, need, need to have um, some kind of confidence. It helps breed confidence. So if you didn't have that, I can see how you would feel like you're still looking. We've talked about that with your sleep and, and this sort of thing. So this is definitely a good topic to work on because when we um, transform it, it will help you in many areas of your life. And it makes me want to go, um, go and see now I don't know if you're able to and now you've said that you that I mean you've come up with the with the um with the insights that yeah going to look for resources somewhere else and that's good that's what you you know that's what you were meant to do to be resourceful to find answers somewhere else uh, and that would lead to that but that there's that pain right there I think that 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 you, that piece of you that is still waiting for some kind of 
um, some kind of validation, some kind of, um, I don't know, what would you call it? Can, can, you, can you access that part of you? Can you, um, and I know that you, that you have that. And, you know, like you said, you're, I see, I've seen you not being able to, able to sleep well because there's kind of a dissatisfaction. There's a missing something. Yeah, it does feel like there's like something missing. Um, I think it is just a lack of um, completion. I mean, yeah, so it was not, not having like the, the support or mm -hmm. the acknowledgement or feeling um, like I mattered, you know? I think that's really another thing is like, I don't feel like I mattered or like I was forgotten. Yeah, yeah, I can, I can kind of really sense that forgotten, just left there uh, alone. Um, so there's, there's a number of ways that you can work through this. You know, I, I started with EFT. Um, I have tools that I could help neutralize this. But, I, but again, this is about teaching you how to, how to move through this. And so, you know, it's, I think it's a core thing. The way that I see you right now, this core thing of just kind of being left there alone and needing and miss, you know, something's missing. Um, this might sometimes, okay, this might be as complicated as soul retrieval. And I actually have given people an idea of how to do a soul retrieval on their self. Probably most shamans are not going to share <laughs> how to how to do your own soul retrieval, but it's really just a matter of 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 tuning into that part of you that might have checked out, and this is the, that's kind of what I'm getting here. So this is going to be more complicated <laughs> than most um, than most uh, you know healing. Like like a lot of people, if they, they if we get to this part, we found the core reason. The core reason is um, missing something, or the core reason is. Um, is is being left there alone you know you you might tap on it you might sit in there do you do, you do um eft oh i have done it a few times i'm gonna um see about putting us back on um our faces <laughs> all right so okay so i'll so some people that they'll, they'll they'll get to that part like for me i see you just sitting there looking alone like you've finished something or you're working on something and you need somebody to help you with it like you need somebody to bounce ideas off of or you need somebody to say is this right you know did, did that happen in school or anything like that um yeah did, did you need help? It, it's yeah it happened at school maybe i was too also shy to like ask for it uh -huh. but um i also didn't feel like people were just available for me you know mm -hmm. Okay, so at this point, you know, I would say, you know, there it is. There's that core reason. There's that feeling. Did you get that at all when you were, it was kind of like what you got when you were thinking about, about, you know, um, the, the, when, when this first happened? Yeah. Okay. So that, that's when you might tap, you know, you don't necessarily have, even have to have a setup phrase. You can just be in the pattern, you know what I mean? You can just be in the emotion. You can just be in the memory, feeling what you felt um, at that point. And just tapping while you're in that could help. That's one way to do it for those who do EFT, familiar with EFT. And EFT isn't hard, so you don't need to make it hard. You have the energy, the, the emotion is stuck somewhere in your meridian system. And, and a lot of times we can just go, even though I felt abandoned, alone, and afraid um, of my own answers and not unsure of my own answers with nobody to, to um, bounce them off of, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. Even though I may not have all of the answers um, in myself, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. See, because there's that, it's left there. It's left there. That emotion is left there in your energy field. And what we need to do is we need to clear it because we can't see beyond that. You know what I mean? We can't see, sure, you have, you may have learned to, to um, access people in a certain way, but probably not to the full extent that 
you know, that is your potential. So, and, and that, that feeling, that vibration of not having access to your needs, not having your needs met is, is creating more of that, right? right? So did, did that help at all? Do you feel any different when you think about, I mean, think about your partner not being available for you right now? when you're like looking for some kind of answer as to, I mean, it seems like you're looking for what he feels like now, you know what you feel like. And you, you're you looking to see what, how does he feel about the way you feel? You just feel like you have a lot of things that you wanna know, right? Right. And so not knowing them, how bad, on a scale of one to 10, how bad does that feel right now? How, I know that you said you've had anger and that would be a 10 and that sort of thing. Is there still that kind of anger about him not being available to help you work this out? Well, I feel kind of like an energy flow right now. You know, I think that sometimes happens when I do the forms or when I've worked with you. So it feels like le- distant, I guess. It feels more distant. Mm-hmm. There's more space between it. Um, I absolutely still have a curiosity, but um, and that's I think good. that's what I struggle with is not knowing. Like I always want to know about a lot of things. And yeah. so but yeah, it's, it's probably gone down in severity um, as far as a number, I don't know, maybe a five. Okay, okay. So, um, and I'm gonna keep up with this and then I'm gonna see, like I said, I'm sensing soul retrieval is, is, is necessary here and that makes it a little bit more complicated because you know that's another reason why you're missing something because when others weren't available, to you, you kind of checked out. So you weren't available to yourself, but that Mm -hmm. part of you needs healed. And that part of you might naturally come back, reconnect with you, or you might have to ask her to come back. It's to help people understand when soul retrieval is, is necessary. It's when you feel that something is missing. Um, You know, I will, when I'm doing a psychic reading, I'll feel that part of you. It's like, as soon as I ask the question, it's almost like a, there's like magnets out there in the universe that go here, here's that answer. And so I see that part of you and we'll see if we can bring it back without making it very complicated, without an actual soul retrieval. Because I, like I said, I want to teach you how to do these sort of things. And it's, 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 um, it's something you need to know that, that, that if you're missing something or if you feel like part of you didn't want to deal with the with the situation that's the indicator that you know uh, a fragmentation has happened with your soul when you cannot get something resolved you know part of you the part of you that's able to to help you with that has checked out so so right now we're at a point where you um you're a five I'm feeling um you know, the, the bad feelings about him not being available, maybe bad feelings about nobody being available when you were a child. Um, and we can go, we can do some more tapping on that or we can, or we can, um, yeah, I think it's a good idea. Sometimes it shifts, sometimes it's, you talked about being curious, but curious isn't a bad thing, okay? Curious, curious is a good thing, you know? I, I always say that if you can be curious, you're, you know, neutral kind of curious, you're going to get the answers that you want one way or another. So there's nothing wrong with curiosity. That's, that's absolutely what you want to shift to. And it sounds like it started to do that, which is a good thing. Um, nothing, you know, we'll do it again. Even though I don't know, I don't have all the answers, I deeply and completely accept myself. Even though the answers might be outside of me, I deeply and completely love and accept myself for what I know and and for learning that I am able to get the answers that I need. So don't always have all the answers, might not have the answers, might not have the answers right now. They might be within me. All that I need just might be within me. It might already be there. It might already be there. I think I went in that in that space because I felt it shift. Did what do you do? Um, 
it's like I personally wasn't able to even say that anymore that you don't have that you don't have it and I'm not sure why that happened I almost feel like it shifted well how do you feel do you feel like it shifted to how would I test um by thinking about the way you feel about the situation with um with your partner um him not being here to talk to you about what what's going on or how you feel about it Yeah, I think I feel better about it. Um, I don't feel so much hate and anger. Um, yeah, there, there's more neutrality, I would say. Okay, okay, that's good. And that's huge because that's, that is difficult, you know, that, I mean, it's very human nature for us to want the other one to be sorry, to, to realize that, you know, for this to work, they've got to be this or that, you know, I, I know that there's a, there, that that's human nature, but if you can go, I mean, what are your thoughts about him not being available? What are your thoughts? Yeah. I mean, I still know that like my, my take responsibility for my part in creating the reality because of an unprocessed um, part of myself. However, I still don't, agree with his behavior so um uh -huh. I guess what it teaches me is that I don't have to accept that behavior you know like I want a partner who can work through things instead of when things get difficult like he just disappears or needs to like end the you know end the relationship until it's good for him again because of his own lack of dealing with his emotions uh -huh. so I still have judgments for sure and I okay. still don't agree with how he handled the situation but um I guess what I recognize is more like I have the power to choose and um if he can't like level up I guess in the sense of really being all in in a relationship and working through difficulties then we're not aligned for a partnership that's good that's good that 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 is a statement that has shown that you've taken away the need for him to fix it. That's why we get entangled in relationships because you have this need, you have this need, you have this need and he's triggering the need, right? So you're thinking that he has to fix it. But when you can move to a place where it's not about him fixing what's within you and being able to let go you're really good. You're in a really good space. Yeah, totally. So what, so that feels true that you can let it go. Or are you going to, what's your, it on a scale of one to 10 for him to come back and say, I was wrong, or I'm not, a, you know, admit that he's not doing things right. What on a scale of one to 10, 10 being the needing that the most where yet? I feel like I still would would want that but needing it is like low you know like yeah two okay okay um i think uh it would be nice is a good feeling to have because it, it would be nice i would prefer that is where you want to be that's a neutral setting intention i would really like him to recognize what and when you don't need it you take away that he feels it. You guys are really connected. And that's another reason why you keep feeling him. You know what I mean? Because you're like needing him. So you, so you're not letting go. You know what I mean? You can't just cut cords. So many people say, just cut cords. No, you need him. <laughs> you can't cut, just cut cords because you still need him. Right. You know, it just, it just doesn't work that way. Um, so when you can um, get back into yourself, it would be nice if that's setting intention, that's taking away that, that pull that he feels, you know, we know he, he resists that. And I can relate to him because I don't like that feeling either. You know what I mean? I don't want to be responsible for, for other people's stuff. I got my own stuff to be right. responsible for. So it would be nice. I would prefer is a, in a detached way is a really, really good place to be. You know, we don't have to, we don't have to eliminate every feeling that we have right you're 
you're okay and you're whole and you're accept yourself for wanting those things. You know what I mean? Just it's just it's the needing, it's it's the obsession, it's the that shows that there's something within you that's that definitely needs to be resolved. So share and see where we're at with this. So we have um Yeah, I think we're going to have to skip why would you choose this unless you feel like you want to talk about why you might choose this problem. If you've, if there's, sometimes we do just skip them. They're irrelevant. Um, yeah, if you feel I like skip that one. Okay. Yeah, I, it, it's just different ways that I've, you know, it's just questions that, that you have to ask yourself sometimes to get to the bottom of things and they're not always relevant. You don't have to answer every single question. Um, so negative emotions, do you feel um, any negative emotions at this point? That's when you know you're a little off balance. If it's just a wanting, if it's just your preference, that's not a negative emotion. So it's interesting because like this topic kind of had two scenarios to it because that other spiritual healer that I'm talking about is helping me with energy, which is helping the relationship with the twin flame. And so with Mark, I don't feel as much anger towards him. I'm kind of like, whatever, you know, <laughs> like, I think I'm kind of tired of the, you know, the process with him. And so I'm just like, bye. <laughs> and I don't really mean that because I'm sure. Yeah. It'll happen. But right now, but I am still caught in the same, it's the same pattern with this healer because she's been on she's not been communicating with me and we're mid of the process. And so I'm uh, frustrated. And oh. so it's kind of coming towards her. Like, why can't you just send me a text message and let me know if you're like, if you're not okay, or like, if you need to take a few days or what is happening with the process, you know? And so I'm angry at her and it's all wrapped into the Mark situation because. Oh, cause there's still something unresolved. Yeah, it's still something unresolved. We're mid cycle, and you know, uh -oh. um, yeah. So, and, and just like it, I do, feel like I need her to complete this process because you know, like I paid for the service, and there's energy, and so I don't like when energy is just sitting there and the process is incomplete. Um, so yeah, there's something unresolved. There's something I still feel like I need, and really, I feel like disrespected because why can't you just communicate with me? <laughs> like. If you can't, um, if you need three days off, tell me you need three days off, you know? Yeah. So ignored. Um, and so that cycle is still spinning those negative emotions with her. And, and so okay. okay. So that's really the same thing. It's, it's, it's exactly the way I saw you kind of there feeling like you're in limbo. Yeah. Right, because what we're doing is big work and I've noticed great results from it. So I do want it and I, it matters to me. And it's progressively, progressively helping me in all areas of life. But mm -hmm. it keeps getting delayed because she has so much stuff in her personal life. And it's frustrating because mm -hmm. I want to move forward with my life, you know, but it's, you know, it's tiered. We're doing it for different areas of my life. I want to move into a new career. I feel like I'm kind of in this holding pattern. Uh. Okay, let's do an EFT on that. Oh, and um, by the way, I don't have that yank anymore on the fragment of the soul. So I think EFT actually can bring part of your soul back oh, to you. Cool. So, but, but it is uh, clearly we're still, and I think that because that has re, uh, that part of you has come back and that's the way it feels that um, you're going to be, more able to um, clear this, clear this out. But so we've gotten to a core pattern, unresolved, disrespected, ignored. Um, yeah, I think the disre disrespected and ignored is almost like a subset of unresolved that you, that unresolved really needs to be resolved. So let's see if we can do some EFT on that and, um, and shift it. So even though I don't like being in limbo. <laughs> I deeply and completely accept myself. Um, even though I don't know where to go, I don't know what to do, I need help. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm in this space by myself. 
with no input, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. Even though there's this space, this present moment that I'm uncomfortable with, I deeply and completely love and accept myself and choose to just notice what it is, why it's here, and what it's trying to tell me. This unresolved, unresolved. This unresolved makes me uncomfortable. This not knowing what this space is about makes me uncomfortable. The unresolved, the unknowing, this, this, this space of nothingness, this no space, nothing, unresolved. If we pause here and you consider this limbo space of her not getting back to you and you're not exactly past something what on a scale of one to ten how 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 bad does that feel how frustrating um it's like it's hard for me to pull it up right now which is interesting so it's like <laughs> there's again there's a distance between it so when i think about kelly is her name um yeah, it's more neutral. I still prefer that she would res be more responsive and and take her work and how powerful it is more seriously. <laughs> like I still <laughs> have judgments about her. Okay. Because you feel disrespected. Yeah, because I feel well, because it's to me not like I've worked with a lot of spiritual healers and I have an ideal form of integrity, or I don't even know if I should go as far as integrity, but um, responsibility, responsibility, it's a huge responsibility when you're when you're affecting people's lives. And, yeah. and so I guess I have more of a, a charge on that because of my own value. And in that and I've certainly worked with people who they they value it's like God's work. And so, and not to say she doesn't, but her lack of responsibility in communication is not aligned with my beliefs. So, okay. so I don't know if that's an unresolved thing within myself or if that's- Well, it, I think it all, it all goes back to, you, you know, there's more, there's more to do with the, with the unresolved because if, if you weren't unresolved, then it wouldn't bother you. You wouldn't have judgments. You're you're oh, looking still for her to help you resolve. Right. What? Well, so, I'm wanting something in her to change, and I don't know that that's because it make because if her changing makes you feel not ignored, resolved. What is her changing? What would how would that help you feel better? Well, then I would know what's going on. Then I would have that reassurance. Yeah. Then I would feel like there's communication. So I would feel more like involved in the process. Um, okay. Yeah. And more yeah. present, you know, and just, yeah, exactly. More not ignored and not disrespected and more resolved. Even if the process was still in limbo, I would at least know, hey, what the heck's going on here? And so I feel kind of like blinded. Right. So, right. Yeah, I'm still putting blame on, or I'm still wanting her to be different than she is, basically. And that's because, yeah, because it goes back to we still have some work to do on the unresolved. Right. So it's almost like um, I, I want to kind of look at this for a minute. If there's anything, you know, sometimes you got to look at these different parts of it as a what is that? Mm. You know what I mean? But but it's but it seems like it really is a very core pattern it is yeah um and um for me i'm seeing you know it, it goes back very far it goes back very far i'm getting actually past life i'm getting pulled to my past life space um and um mm -hmm. Really, it was actually about somebody dying. 
somebody dying that you needed something from. So not, you know, when you, (laughs) you can't resolve something with somebody when they have died. right? Right. So what does that tell you? That tells you that. (laughs) No wonder that that's there, you know, it's no wonder that it's there, but it's also, um, it's also a clue that you really need to not look to somebody else to get resolved. Um, and you know, the situation with this other healer would come up because of that feeling within you. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's supposed to happen to help you move through it. I think that right. can help us when you realize that it can help you to not, to not judge, you know, look at this all as co-creation, you know, they're supposed to come into your life to help you to, to do just what you're projecting, just what you're vibrating at so that it can be resolved. Um and you are resolving it in your you're resolving it in yourself without even realizing it, right? Um, because you're working you, with me on yeah, this. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So I'm working on your, your form. You're doing yeah. your form. So again, you're you're um I'm looking for a, a, another key, maybe another key phrase as far as this unresolved. Um Let's just just see if you can put a number on it again uh, on a scale of one to 10. Obviously, there's still quite a bit there. Um, It feels a little bit more distant, but obviously, you know, we've talked about things that have almost either brought it back or in another situation or um, it's shifted a little bit. Yeah, it's gone down. I mean, I, again, I think there might still be a little, be some there, but the judgment isn't as as harsh um, regarding her responsibility and communication. Also, you know, I have been looking at this as to how am I creating this because this isn't the first time this exact situation's happened with her. Like, all these different health things keep coming up, and I'm just like, what, what is going on? Um, oh. And, you know, to delay, to delay the process. Yeah. You know, and so I know that like, I have to, like, it's, it's calling me, this pattern is calling me to resolve it itself. So um, what do I feel towards her now? <sighs> yes. Of course, the desire is still there to know like yeah okay let's do this even though there's still some of this need to resolve things now (laughs) me and my boyfriend um sometimes joke around we call it now because my (laughs) my, (laughs) i have a very impatient five pound yorkie (laughs) and you you can almost hear say i want it now (laughs) even though i want this resolved now (laughs) I deeply and completely love and accept myself and this space, this time to be present um, and be with myself. Even though I feel like I need to know this now to be able to go anywhere in my life, to be able to do anything else, I deeply and completely love and accept myself and realize that this may be the space that where it gets resolved. So even though I think somebody else has to help me resolve things before they can be resolved, and I rely on them to be available, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. So needing others to step up, help me to resolve them, need them resolved now, resolve now, now. (laughs) <laughs> now, 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 and I didn't know that I can really sense when it shifts, which it hasn't, now, 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 
Now, now, just keep on tapping. Now, now, wherever that comes from. Whenever I wasn't, when there was nobody there and I wanted it now, can't leave it unresolved. I'm gonna go around feeling bad until it's resolved, feeling bad until it's resolved, not knowing till it's resolved in limbo land, in limbo land, in limbo land until it's resolved now, now, now. Let's pause for a minute because I'm, I'm not, I didn't feel that quite fully shift. There's like something else that needs to be accessed. Um, and I might have to look at that psychically, but what are your thoughts on her, uh, uh, where you're at? And, and, and you know, I, I don't even, I kind of feel like she's not even the issue anymore that it has been brought back to you're needing it resolved right away. But what are your yeah, thoughts? Yeah, I think it also pulls up the um, impatience pattern that I have as far mm -hmm. as do I do need things now. Like there's like, I, I've been like really itchy and I looked up the emotional root behind that and it's like an impatience, like a need for something to be done now. And yeah. Yeah. I have that pattern, which is very difficult part. Like sometimes it's, it's very wearing in my life because it's just everything's so urgent and there's an intensity to it. And so that's also how I felt about this process. And mm -hmm. she's definitely felt that energy for me. And it comes across as it can come across as demanding because it's like, come on, like, I need you. Like, let's do this now. You know, like we're on a time clock. I'm on a timeline. I want my life to look like a certain way. And so all of these things I think are looped together, but that's what's bringing, what I'm being brought to now is just the, the rushing, the impatience, the striving, the forcing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there is a problem for me when things are unresolved. I hate sitting in limbo. It's very mm -hmm. uncomfortable for me. And I just want it to be done. Like, let's just get it done. Yeah, okay. Um, <clears throat> all right, well, let's, let's do this. Even though I'm not comfortable with the present moment, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. Even though I can't move forward with these with, with any sort of imbalance whatsoever, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. Even though I have to be completely perfectly aligned before I can do anything, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. Um, not comfortable with the present moment. The present moment, this present moment, present moment imbalance, present moment imbalance. This present moment imbalance bugs me. Present moment imbalance. I'm kind of stopping. I, I'm feeling a little different. I don't know about you. Every sigh is good. Release. Yeah. What would I ask myself to test? Um, her and what you're working on, um, I think there's still a need for speed there. So I don't, I don't know that the rushing impatience has shifted. Okay. Um, so what's so wrong, what's wrong with the present moment? What's wrong with the present moment? Why are you in limbo land? What's ro what's wrong with being just being? It's kind of going okay. back. To, it's going back to. It's almost like that visual. You're by myself. You're by yourself. You don't like being by yourself. Right. Yeah. It's that, and it's like I need to get somewhere. I need to get somewhere else. So there's. You could look at that as leaving myself and disconnecting from myself or just yeah, discontentment with the present moment because I need something to be different than it is. Yeah. Maybe I want to feel different than I feel. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so there's a lot of layers to this, but. Um, mm -hmm. Let's just try one more time. Even though things just aren't right with my life and I'm having a hard time sitting in that I deeply and completely love and accept myself, even though this is not where I want to be. And I don't want a journey. I just want to be where I want to be. 
I deeply and completely love and accept myself. Even though the journey sucks, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. Don't want the journey, just want to be there. Don't want the journey, forget the journey. Sick of this journey, sick of the pain. Don't want the journey, don't want the discomfort. Discomfort in the journey. This missing something, missing something. I need to get to where I'm not missing something. Doesn't matter that I have a job, a home, friends, my routine. It's not what I want. Something else. I want something else. I want something else. I want something else. I want something else. Now. I want something else. Now. I'm just going to pause and see. to your energy. I don't know how to explain the way that I see your energy now. It's um, there's loss. There's a sense of loss. And I know that, you know, there's your partner who you're disconnected from at the moment, but then that happens because it's there. What else, Where? what else have you lost or what causes this feeling of loss? Do you feel that? I mean, I, I felt it when I did the form, I think, or when I was journaling yesterday. Um, Yeah, it's just the loss. It seems like it's the loss of I can't tell if it's the loss of myself or the loss of just the presence and the availability of the people around me. And so just there's some oh. it, like like what came to me in those in those times of journaling were just the little girl that just felt so much loss and so much pain and so much hurt because it again, like she was invisible. It's like people were physically there, but they weren't emotionally there. So okay. therefore there was like an emptiness. And so, oh, right. so even know. though there's this loss, even though I feel empty and I want to feel full, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. Even though this present moment feels like loss, I'm not seeing anything else around me. I deeply and completely love and accept myself. Even though I think going somewhere else will fill me, I deeply and completely love and accept myself and fill myself with my own self-love. Loss? It's loss? It's loss? But my own love, my own love is there. I haven't been able to share it. So I direct it toward myself. The love, the love that has nowhere to go. I pull it within and I let it fill me. My own self-love. Filling me to the brim. Loving where I'm at. My ability to be by myself. To find what I need when I need it. It's there. It's all there within reach, all I have to do is ask. All I have to do is ask and in divine right time, it will show up. When I tune into your energy field, that just did a weird echo. Um, I see that it's shifted, but um, there's still going to be um, I don't know. How do you feel? How do you feel about 
needing to get to the place, needing to be perfect. <laughs> um, let's see. I think it's, I think there's a little bit still there, but I think the intensity is lessened. Um, I think there is still some aloneness or loneliness. Like I woke up in the middle of the night, there was fire alarms going off, which was insanely annoying and mm. felt alone and lonely. But I honestly think it might also be somewhat situational because I still don't have a huge group of friends here. You know, like <clears throat> I'm separated from Mark, you know, like some of those, like you said, we create a reality, but some of it is just like, I need more connection. Yeah. But, you know, I, so, so what I'm saying is I think things are neutralizing, but I, it's not all the way gone, you know? Right. Well, this is where, you know, neut neutralizing is good. Not all the way gone. If there's still a desire or if you're becoming more aware of your desire without the need, you know, the need is the, is the need is it just kind of, it's again, looking outside of yourself, it's not being whole. You have everything you need within, including the ability to re, you know, to connect with others. I mean, we are about connecting with others. I'm not saying you have to be everything that, you know, everything, but being, being good with yourself, being okay with yourself will absolutely, um, from that place of being neutral, you can absolutely just wish, <laughs> just prefer friends prefer people to talk to, to to have you know be able to have conversations with and that sort of thing you can you can create it so if you if you can get to the feeling well all I have to do is this or that or you know whatever um that would be a good place to be okay yeah yeah I think that it's um you know some of its action of course you know and like putting that intention out there and things like that so mm -hmm. which is what I'm doing because you know like things are finally open so I can go connect with people so yeah. um so are you still sensing that I need to do a soul retrieval um mm -hmm. yeah that came back that came back to where I see I see something, something caused you to almost close up to anything else. Um, the, the visual is almost of you. It's, a, it's kind of a weird visual of the, of the, of the posture that you exited at. It's like you bending over and holding your ankles. Um, like straight legged almost like it's it's almost like it's kind of an exercise is there something that you remember that you were in that posture some trauma then it pulls me and then that was you know that was that same kind of posture um hmm. exercising or um It feels like some kind of exercise. You weren't super young, like generally um, a soul retrieval, uh, uh, a fragmentation happens very young, but but it's almost like you were at a age you were exercising. And the, the weird thing about it is it shows me that you were, you're bending over, you're holding your ankles and then you back up. <laughs> you're, you take steps back while you're holding your ankles. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I weird. mean, I did gymnastics for a small period of time. Oh, you did. Okay, that could be that. It, it, was there something in the a trauma that you remember in job, gymnastics? Um, it feels like an embarrassment. Mm. Maybe like a humiliation. Um, it, it, the bending over almost feels like you're hiding your body. Oh, yeah. I think at that time I was definitely dealing with like I not feeling thin enough, even though I was like really thin. Uh -huh. um, so I think there was body image stuff. Oh, okay. So a part of you hide yourself, mm -hmm. and that's and that's why you um you feel alone. 
you're hiding mm. yourself. Um, so, um, so even though a part of me wants to wants to hide out, very conflicted in that I also feel the need of people to be validated, to validate me, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. And I'm kind of, it's just like, almost like it's surrogate for this part of you, you know what I mean? Doing this tapping is like surrogate tapping for this part of you that is fragmented. And I'm just watching her um, see if she changes. So even though, even though I feel the need to hide myself, even though I may not look like everybody else, even though I'm my own, I'm me and not them, I deeply and completely love and accept myself, even though I'm special. I deeply and completely love and accept myself, even though I have my own qualities that others don't have. And even though others have qualities that I don't have, I deeply and completely love and accept my own qualities. We're different, We're different. I've hidden my differences. I've hidden my differences, but I now embrace my differences because my differences make me special. My differences are unique. I'm unique. I'm special. And I want to come back and use those special abilities and gifts. So I'm just like, like I said, I'm watching her. That, I don't know about you, that, this part of you, if you need to feel that in her, in, you know, that part of you to feel what I see in her, almost like spinning, dancing, not worried about her body anymore. What are your, what, what do you feel? There's a connection, but, the, but she's still kind of fragmented. Um, And you know you may not even be experiencing that that feeling because it's part of you. It's not even there. That's mm. feeling it. So, but she does have that potential of just being good with who she is. So, I think people can do this on their own, especially if people meditate and and, and things like that. They, they they can close their eyes, you know, and ask if any if there's a part of themselves that has fragmented. I don't want this to go into teaching uh, personal soul retrieval. I'm just gonna do it, okay? Um, But, but there, yeah, soul retrieval is a big deal. It does help you to feel more whole. You definitely need that um, because the reason you haven't been able to let go is that emptiness. There's, a, there's something missing. There has been something missing. So that, that'll be this. Let me go back to the form. Okay. Um, that got more complicated than what somebody would be able to do on their own. Um, but, you know, just to reiterate, if, if one is feeling that something missing and not able to get to, um, get to that feeling of wholeness, then, you know, it might be something to look into to having a shaman do a soul retrieval. Uh, but it can be done if in meditation you ask for any part of you that has exited to 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 show themselves and 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 the trauma but i know i i don't necessarily recommend that that kind of work on your on yourself i i i am all for empowering people but some sometimes um a shaman or whatever has more experience with that sort of thing so um we have gotten to the let's look at your unresolved um feeling maybe looking at this other healer and the disrespect, okay. the ignoring you, is that still there? 
it's I don't feel as disrespected, but I still notice that the need or the want to like poke her in the sense of like reach out to get an answer to like continue to follow up so that I can get a response. So, <laughs> so that is still there. It's still present. Okay. And is it, is it a, is it a bad feeling or is it just all oh, I need to go? I need to go see where she's at. It doesn't have as much of a, as much of a bad feeling. It's still like, I need you to respond to me. Like there's still a little bit of a, like you need to do this to, to her. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so it is still like a, that part is unresolved. As far as the unresolved part of the work, I think there's a little bit less or more neutrality about that. There's a little bit more neutrality about feeling disrespected or ignored it's more of just like no I still want an answer because I think I deserve an answer and I'm still going to reach out mm -hmm. to you so that you give me an answer because I think that's only fair <laughs> so I don't right. know how that. yeah I've seen the way that I'm seeing it is it, it's to me I would still call it feeling ignored um yeah like you're not with or you're not paying attention to me like I hello yeah. I'm here can you at least just send me a text message you know like that kind of thing right right um um This, the visual that I'm getting uh, of your energy, it's as if your back is turned, your head is down, and yet you have like um, like one eye going in that direction as if, as if, as if you don't wanna make a scene, but you wanna be noticed without having, it's almost like you wanna be noticed without having to do anything. <laughs> And that's my interpretation, but because you just said you you need to, to reach out, but do you want to? Do you feel like you should have to? Oh yeah, no, I don't feel like I should. I feel like she should just respond, like just be looping me in. I don't feel like I should have to fight to get an answer. Um, nor do I want to have to be in this position. But mm -hmm. since she's not being responsive, I feel like I have to take it into my own account. Yeah. Right, and but the, but but what's causing it? What's causing this? Is this new, almost like um? I can feel like it's interesting. I can kind of like feel and see her energy and like her mm -hmm. existence closer to me. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, like I still prefer communication, but um there's less intensity behind needing, needing it or just all of these things are really related you know you're you want to get through things you know that's the way you are you want things now now you're more efficient you know so everything is kind of related you know it is and and i think it really needs to come back to you being okay with the present moment how do you feel about the present moment We've done a soul retrieval part of you that's, you know, you know, you're trying to get back to something and, and some things really need time to really kind of integrate as well. So we might not have you 100% neutral on everything, but what what's your feelings about unresolved, about her not getting back to you, about about needing to be where you need to be, where you think you need to be? I'm more resolved about the unresolved energy work about how it's just sitting there, even though, yeah, I have a need for speed in, in many aspects. Sometimes I wonder if some of it is part of who I am. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. like I'm going to get stuff done with efficiency. Like it's very much in my nature just to like, okay, this is what I need to do. This is how I'm going to do it. This is what it's going to look like, you know, like that's very easy for me, but, um, 
as far as um unresolved so I'm better with that as far as my relationship or my response with her I'm more laxed about it like before this I was like thinking about how I'm going to reach out to her you know when I'm going to call her if I need to go on her site to get through to her like all of these things now I'm just like maybe I'll give a little bit more space or maybe I'll send her a message that I hope she's doing okay because I think she's going through something you know yeah Um, and then with Mark I think I already told you I'm kind of like yeah whatever um what was the other one that we worked on oh the rushing the rushing and the impatience and the present moment yeah the present moment so that one I am more present I think there's still work for me to do there Mm -hmm. um but it's better and like you said potentially like it'll take a little time for you know this whole retrieval to integrate for me to fully feel that yeah and um, I was going to ask you too, as far as these forms after doing them, is it usually you, you feel better right away or it takes a day or two for these things to circulate and move through? And to yeah, it through? can, it can take a day or two. And sometimes I even recommend doing it to me that tying it all together is like, you are very efficient and you are just better at doing it yourself. <laughs> mm. Like you're learning a lot of things. You're pushing through, like you're learning this and you you got me on the f- phone f- on the Zoom or whatever for two hours on a Saturday morning, which I might not normally do. So, I mean, you're, you got it going on. You can get things done, right? Um, that's what I get, that you, that as much as you don't want to be by yourself because of, you know, what happened, it's all about teaching you that you, that, you got it going on as far as getting things done almost like yeah, i'm kind of getting that too like what happened with my energies i just it brought me back to myself and almost maybe the soul retrieval like i actually had a different experience of my own energy of like filled out with mm-hmm. my own you know uh image of of my body and the energy so anyways i think you're right and i think that's actually where spirit is guiding me to learn to be able to do some of these things that I'm relying on other people to do for me on my own. Like some of them are very spiritual gifts, you know, like psychic and, you know, moving energy and things like that. So as I continue to get more and more aligned with myself and my higher self and with divinity, I think I agree. That's where it's going is for me to be able to do these things for myself because then I can do it when I want to do it. And yeah, <laughs> with the same intention and efficiency that I like to operate under because you're right not everyone likes to work how I do they have a lot of other things you know that they, they're just their mode of operation is different and that doesn't make it bad or wrong it's just not not mine you know? right 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 it sounds like we've made some progress here Hello. I agree I think that I can't believe how many of these things were all tied together because I'm like wow there's just like I could like see the links of whoa that and that and like you named a lot of them, like the expectations, you know, and all of these things play into these patterns. And so I'm excited to see where it lands. And then if there's more that's needed to do, because I haven't been doing the EFT with this. So maybe I should add that on my own as well. Yeah. You know, when I do sessions, you know, I'll see core patterns and I'll be able to help people with um, with those setup phrases. But you don't need that. If you're in the pattern, if you've accessed it, you've you've asked for it you therefore accessed it. It's right there. You don't need special words. You can just tap while you're in it. Mm-hmm. You know, you've talked about before when you're sitting in it and it just makes you feel worse. Tap. When you're sitting in it. You don't need the words. Just tap. Yeah. Like I noticed there was a pattern that came up last night that was really gross. It was just like a feeling of like, ugh, like I, I wanted to move out of it because it was just all these mixed negative emotions but I just asked myself to sit through it. And that would have been helpful if I would have done the EFT because just sitting there is difficult sometimes because I'm just like, like, is this going to pass, you know? But then to your point too, with the, when we see the childhood parts that come up sometimes with the patterns and the fragments, which is that mirror exercise that I was kind of talking to you about, would that be a good opportunity to um, like kind of, 
just bring that part and integrate it into oh you know, absolutely age. okay the, especially the let go question how can you let go you know or integrate it there that part because we're we're looking for the the resolution at that point and you know the tapping should help neutralize and then you'll have the answer once neutralized you'll have that answer as to how you let go although this might have done the let letting go, go as well right but but that would be the time to um integrate that part to make you feel the way you want to feel i like neutral i don't i i i think i don't strive well, you think you need something when you're not feeling it, right? When you're feeling bad about something, you think you need, you know, all this attention, <laughs> you know, right. you think we need the opposite. So, but when you neutralize, that's what, that's why it's hard to know what you actually want when you're in the middle of that. And you got to kind of clear that up first and then set your intentions for what you want. Let me real quick look at the um, form and see if there's anything else we miss. I wanted to at least get through the first part of the negative emotions. Uh, well, look at there's who's responsible. When you when you get this far in the form with who is responsible, we've pretty much cleared up, you know, finding anybody else responsible most of the time. Um, uh, we look at karma, you know, it's times you you've um, caused somebody else to feel this way is something you want to look at. If you have caused somebody else to, to feel that way, there's generally something you have to do that's the opposite. I, I mentioned to you that, you know, I don't wanna be responsible for everybody's feelings. I'd rather teach them to be responsible for their own feelings. And, and it's come down to this because in a past life, I saw that um, I treated people or, or I was like expected, I like use them, <laughs> you know? In this life, I'm not like that at all, you know, but I was always getting something from other, wanting other people to give me something or something like that. And I am not like that in this life. But when I ask, you know, I use my pendulum. Is it, um, is it, am I, I forgot what I asked myself, but, um, but I'm, you know, I'm supposed to help people. It doesn't mean I don't help people. I, it doesn't mean I don't, you know, have healthy boundaries, but I still need to help people more um, than I do to make up for the karma in a past life. So we do, we look at our karma and how we clear kar karma. Um, ask yourself, how do you clear karma? Answers will come, whether it's in meditation, whether it's um, the, you know, the, the world showing you some way that the answers will come. So, and then when it's, when you ask the question, is it you or something else? We're basically talking about the ego, you know, the ego creates, and you know, I've seen that the ego creates a, um, creates like a shadow figure that, that, that's like an inner demon that is part of the problem here. But when you look at the ego and you say no more, you know, it's, I'm not going to be about my ego. Then you, and you can say anything that's contributing to me having this ego problem has to go, you know, then it will go. So that's, that's all that that's about. So because it, it does, it's like we create it. So basically uh, by telling it to go, it will go? Yeah, and right. that's all I do. Or ask for Archangel Michael to help um, remove any entity that is, you know, that has been created by the ego in this situation and to help neutralize any ego that's at play here. So that's... Um, that's it. Is it you feeling better? Do you feel like this is shifted? You're feeling good yeah. about the process of of neutralizing the the negative emotions? Yeah, definitely. I think I think this one um, was one that I needed help with for sure because I I think I've tried to do this one on my own and it seemed like it just didn't completely resolve. So I'm glad that we worked together on this one and. I think also the soul retrieval will help. But yeah, now at least I can also remember, recall like the EFT and now that's another tool to use through this. And, you know, I think the more that I do it, the better I'll get. Yeah, you will. You're very efficient. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to stop the recording now and then I'm going to just touch base with you um, okay. about something else.